The Station Hotel, where appearances can be deceiving. Were the spirits trying to make contact with us that night? It certainly seemed that we were not alone. Before Richard Felix reaches the location, he conducts a number of investigations of his own. Hello Keith, it's Richard Felix here from Derby. It's not what you know, it's who you know and having contacts in, in certain areas. I'm trying to get a little bit of, um, well, background, but sort of a horrible thing to say, sort of authenticity to, to one or two of the stories. It's a case of, of speaking to people that you know about the place, um, a visit to the local studies library to find anything and everything you can about the place, the records, what was there before, what was close to it, who inhabited it, things like that. I tend to seek out the ghost stories, but of course also the reality behind the ghost stories. The stories I have about, A, about the, the Tipton Slasher um, reputedly hanging himself in the cellar. He was a prize fighter, a boxer, quite a famous one, locally. And um, he went to see a local medium, um, Theophilus Dunn, and he predicted that, that he would actually lose all his money and um, lose the fight. He did lose the fight, and they say that he also lost all his money. And legend has it that he hanged himself in the cellar of the Station Hotel. Little bit of smoke, and before you know it, there's a flavoury great fire blazing, isn't there? That's the thing. So, I mean, did he have any connections? No, that's fair enough. Uh, what about Theophilus Dunn? In the eyes of the historian, the hotel has just as many secrets to reveal. I'm a great um, searcher uh, and, and um, tunneler. Just another little alcove, I think, under the stairs. It even sounds good down here, doesn't it? I like to measure the bricks and, and try and find out whether it's the same um, period as the actual building above it. Uh, we are talking 19th century brickwork. I got the impression, after looking at the bricks, which of course seemed to be smaller, and of course the smaller the bricks, the, the older the property, it gave me the impression that the Station Hotel was actually built on much earlier foundations. Before we'd even set up the cameras, strange things had started to happen. The actual night before we did the shoot, I stayed in the room 214 with Rick Fielding, the cameraman. The bed actually moved that I was lying on, and I actually turned to Rick and said, Rick, I'm sure this bed's just moved. He came down in the morning and said that his bed had moved while he was in it. It had moved backwards and forwards. Um, and that is the exact same bed we caught on a locked off camera moving. And then on the day of the shoot, Craig, our cameraman, was on the receiving end of more inexplicable goings on. I was at the front of the room and everyone was behind me. Um, and a knife just came literally from nowhere and uh, just clattered onto the ground in front of us. Um, no one threw it. Uh, I don't have a clue where it came from. The other weird thing that happened, as I took the Steadicam rig off, um, I put it up and somebody pulled the edge of my t-shirt, like just tugged it. And uh, yeah, no, again, quite strange. No explanation, no one was standing near me. It didn't get caught on anything, so uh, I don't really know how that happened. Anything can happen. Anything. And I was hopeful. I was optimistic. I felt the whole crew was feeling that anticipation. Moving objects and actual physical effects on the body are often associated with poltergeist activity. Was this behind the strange occurrences at the Station Hotel? There are five main levels for poltergeist activity. Now, level one revolves mainly around the senses. Uh, we hear things, we feel cold spots, uh, feelings of being watched, for instance. I've got the most amazing hot feeling all over the tops of my thighs. They are burning hot, I can't believe that. Level two involves things like smells, noises, sounds, um, breezes that are apparent for no reason whatsoever. Level three involves physical things happening, like appliances being turned on or off lights being switched on or off, things moving. Level four will involve things like tricks, um, objects moving, 
um, things being picked up, disappearing and appearing in another place, for instance. Now, depending on what theory you subscribe to, people suggest that this could be the poltergeist trying to find things that frighten the human beings around them. Level 5 is perhaps the most dangerous level in poltergeist activity. This concerns things like people being slapped, bitten, scratched, punched, being pushed around. A spirit person would have to probably try this procedure many, many, many times in order to elevate it, to transport it across a room. You may be talking about, uh, in our time, uh, that procedure to be honed would take, I suppose, years. But once they have learned the art of this, there's no stopping them. They can do this as regular as just the thought pattern. I want that moved, and it's done.